Akashi clicks his tongue in disappointment as he looks at himself in the full-length mirror. His phone is blowing up with texts where it lies on his bed, but he doesn't bother checking. Having long since given up on any help from the others after OBV Blue brings out Kei Chan's eyes well yes but. All this while ignoring Akashi's crisis. The audacity. He feels underdressed and overdressed all at once. Anxiously pulling at the hem of his sweater as he contemplates if he should change. Yet again. 2. He sighs. Fixes his scarf again. Runs a hand through his hair again and readjusts his glasses as he approaches his bed, plopping down with a huff. He almost jumps out of his skin as his phone lights up just then, with one Bakuto Katero's grinning face flashing on the screen. He picks up, and before he can speak, he has to pull his phone away from his ear. Hey, hey, Kashi. Akashi winces because damn, his ears but then smiles as he hears his boyfriend's ever-enthusiastic voice. Hello, Bakuto-san. Are you ready? I'm outside your house. What? Now. He looks at his bedside table, the bright numbers flashing 1937. He's more than 20 minutes early. Shit. But his voice is completely calm as he speaks. Oh. Okay just a second. I'm coming down. Bakuto hums on the other side, not hanging up as Akashi hurries down the stairs. You can come in. I'm putting on my shoes. Wait. No stop speaking just because he isn't. Also which shoes? This is a mess. Nah. I'll wait outside. There's a cat here. P.S. 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 See me. Akashi lets out a light chuckle as Bakuto continues trying to call the cat over. His tries audible all way to where the setter is on the Jenkin. When Akashi opens the door, after fixing his hair again and putting on his coat, he's greeted with the familiar sight of broad shoulders. Bakuto's crouching. A bit of grey fur peeks out from his front. Akashi breathes out, letting himself admire the sight for a little longer. He watches the ace hold out a hand. Slowly and steadily moving to pet the cat. Only to groan as the feline moves away from the touch and goes away. Bakuto-san. Akashi calls out. Voice only a tiny bit breathy. He thinks he's not breathing as the ace goes still at his voice. Before standing up. He then turns around and oh okay. Akashi is actually not breathing. Cool. Kiji. It feels like it's been forever since he last saw Bakuto. He doesn't know what to do. Hands going up but only hovering on the sides of Bakuto's face when the grey-haired man stands in front of him. It's different, he thinks. The action feels almost alien after this long. He's only watched this same on screens and magazine covers all these months. But then Bakuto's fingers wrap around his wrist. Pressing the palms against his own cheeks and he grins. Leaning into the touch and Akashi is blinking away the tears that well up in his eyes. Bakuto's grin drops. Agashi. Hey. What's. Baby. Are you okay? Akashi nods. Before smiling. Yeah. I just missed you. A lot. A and the grin is back. Brighter. I missed you more. Gashi. Tsum Tsum and Omi-san were being all cuddly and stuff the entire time ever since they got together and I was so sad cause I wanted to do that with you too but you were so far away. Akashi grins. A flash of white teeth. He pinches Bakuto's cheeks. Making his whining stop. The grey-haired man looks at him. Bottom lip jutting out in an endearing pout. Well, I'm close now. Aren't I? Grey brows rise. Not close enough, though. Akashi hums, fingers trailing across his boyfriend's sharp jaw. His pinky brushes against the skin right below Bakuto's ear and the taller one shivers. Ticklish as always. We can change that. The words are a murmur, and Akashi looks up just in time to see Bakuto's face scrunch up and then his hand is going up to push his boyfriend's face away in a split second. Out of instinct, 
as Bakuto lets out a full body sneeze. This is mine. Bakuto states as he stares down at the deep red scarf Akashi handed him. The Exeter feigns confusion, pretending his cheeks aren't as red as he knows they are as he thinks knack to a particular section of his closet. Oh. Uh. Locking the door for the second time. Akashi feels just a bit uncomfortable as Bakuto continues looking at it with a small frown. Had he crossed a line? It wasn't like he'd taken it or whatever. Bakuto himself had left it at his place when he came over all those months ago. Before the season started and he had to go away for games. Akashi never gave it back because he needs something to hold on to when Bakuto isn't there. And to be fair. Bakuto didn't ask back for it either. Besides, they've been together for a bit over a year now. Even though they both admitted they had feelings for each other since high school. This is okay. Should be. Hopefully. Bakuto lets out a ha. Before beginning to wrap it around his neck. Guess you left it at my place. Yee. It's okay though. You can keep it if you want. What's mine is yours. Oh, uh, okay. Bakuto seems totally unfazed by Akashi's neutral tone. Yes. Now can we kiss? Of course. Bakuto-san. Maybe the December carnival wasn't a great idea for a date after all. Bakuto-san. It's fine. Akashi holds back a grimace as Bakuto loses yet again. The fluffy teddy bear prize looks more annoying than cute now. He holds the owl plushie that he won from the game, after which Bakuto had declared he was gonna get the biggest one. That was around 20 minutes ago. Akashi's pulling him away before he can blow cash on yet another try. The owner of the booth looks mildly annoyed but mostly amused, watching as they walk away. Agashi. This feels like high school all over again. Akashi thinks as he hears the dejected voice. He turns around. Yes. Bakuto-san. The corners of Bakuto's lips are pulled in a frown. I lost 11 times. 12. But who's counting correct? That's alright. Bakuto-san. But I told you I'd get you the biggest one. It's okay. Bakuto-san. Let's go get ice cream. Um? Akashi is practically dragging Bakuto to the nearest ice cream stand. There's lots of people around and he feels a bit annoyed at the way some people bump into him. But the upside of the crowd is that people don't recognize the athlete. It'd be a nightmare if they were to gather a crowd. Akashi gets a salted caramel one for himself and a mint chocolate for Bakuto. He involuntarily wrinkles his nose. He's never understood why anyone would get mint chocolate out of everything. Does toothpaste taste that good? He mutters a thank you and pockets the change before taking the cones in his hands. When he turns around, he stills. Bakuto is nowhere to be seen. Akashi sighs loudly, already moving to where he just knows the older man is. But Bakuto is already on his way to Akashi. A grin on his face that increases tenfold as he notices the journalist. This time he has something tucked under his arm. Akashi. I got it. He's holding out the teddy bear from earlier. It's for you. Thank you, Bakuto. Oh, you got me ice cream? Thank you, Kashi. You're the sweetest. A bit later they are seated on one of the benches. Akashi telling Bakuto to slow down as the athlete winces at the brain freeze. The dark-haired man has an arm around the teddy bear and no. It's definitely not because the kid a few feet away has been staring at it for the past five minutes. No. Akashi checks the time. They've been trying different rides and food since they got here hours ago after having dinner at a cozy diner. It's close to midnight now. Time for the final one. Bakuto-san? Bakuto only looks at him with raised brows, stilling as he pushes the last of the cone in his mouth. It should be disgusting, and if it were anyone else Akashi would surely be making a face. But it's Bakuto, his Kaotero, 
and so the face he makes is a fond one because Bakuto is endearingly adorable. Wanna go on the Ferris wheel? The in charge looks as bored as ever as he directs them into one of the cabs. Akashi doesn't blame him. Working on New Year's Eve doesn't sound fun. He's just glad Bakuto has days off until the next season and so they get to finally meet in person. Akashi doesn't mind using up his leave days at all. Fauna calls and FaceTiming can only do do much. And then there's time zones. They sit on the same side. Thighs brushing and the cab door closes. Akashi's stomach does a flip as they are lifted up. Lips set in a straight line. Beside him. Bakuto looks as excited as ever. Akashi, do you have any New Year resolutions? The younger man thinks it over. Being more productive? I don't know. I can't follow through with them so I don't bother setting myself up for that failure. OHH. The cab moves again. Slow. Moving slightly as it balances. They keep rising. Mine was eating out less but that seems kinda hard now that I think of it. I can't cook. Oh. Akashi knows all about that after Bakuto had single-handedly wasted a dozen eggs making a decent omelette for Akashi's breakfast. He still remembers the crunch as he'd chewed onto the shells that had somehow managed to stay in. Hey. Whatever. It's the thought that matters. Are you gonna make a wish tonight? Bakuto-san? It's New Year's, you know. Bakuto rises a shoulder in a careless shrug. I've got everything that I need already. But, if I have to... Hundred thousand billion yen? Endless supply of barbecue? Non-existence of winter season? Akashi guesses in his mind. Better at cooking? Then it'd be that Kiji calls me by my name. Then, with a carefree laugh. Last names don't stay the same forever. So call me Kaotero. Keikashi? Akashi wants to point out he isn't calling him by his first name either but his mind is sort of glitching as it processes the words. No way. Does he? Is he? What the fuck? What do you mean by that? Bakuto looks at him. Golden eyes meeting his blue. A bit of genuine confusion. Hey. Don't you wanna marry me? There it is. Akashi swallows. Closing his eyes as face heats up incredibly fast. Oh my god. I do. Of course I do. I've been in love with you since like. Year 10. He thinks. Barely resisting the urge to bury his face in his hands and screaming when Bakuto grins happily. Like he didn't just shift Akashi's entire world. Cool. Hey. We're on the very top. Just then he feels his phone buzz. Indicating it's 10 seconds to midnight. They are still on the highest point on the wheel and it seems to have caused the rotation. Lucky. Ooh. We get the best view for the fireworks. Nice. He joins the countdown. 6. 5. Bakuto looks at Akashi expectantly. 4. 3. 2. 1. They both say together, very different levels of enthusiasm, and despite being keen on watching the fireworks, the first thing Bakuto does is look at him, eyes on his lips before they meet his eyes by the time which Akashi is already leaning forward. There's the sound of fireworks going off, but Akashi is fully focused on the feel of Bakuto's lips against his own. When they finally pull away, the fireworks are still going on and Akashi can see the reflection of it in Bakuto's eyes. Eyes that are gold and warm and looking at him with such open adoration it makes Akashi's heart physically ache. He couldn't have asked for a better way to start this year. Happy New Year, Kiji. Bakuto smiles at him and Akashi smiles back. Happy New Year, Kaotero. Hello and happy new year guys hope everyone is safe and healthy. I recently made a few friends on here and we each picked a ship to do a new year's special of sorts. As you can see I got Bakuaka, check out their channels for other ships, link will be in the description box and the pinned comment. The idea for this video goes to Lizzie, you're amazing. 
Thank you so much. Stay safe everyone. See you around.